Welcome to the CoLab Podcast. My name is Michelle. And my name is Devin. On this podcast, we explore concepts of self-mastery and community collaboration through in-depth panel discussions and intimate interviews with dance's most prominent figures. Yeah, yeah. See my peanut butter jelly snack. Pull it right, bushy, uh, painted. That's my sunshine when it's raining. That's my pool, yeah. Yeah, when I'm all alone, she pulled through. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Collab Podcast. Today's guest has a resume that is nothing short of eminent. An undeniable leader in the community, Celine began her dance career in 2010 with Studio 429's junior team, True Definition. Discovering her path for dance a short two years later, Celine went on to join another one of their junior teams, Breakthrough. In 2013, Celine joined the reputable Choreo Cookies and had mentors like Keone Madrid, Carlo Durang, Chris Martin, and many more. Celine recently closed her chapter with Choreo Cookies in January of this year and has shifted her focus to her role at Building Block as a Seniors Academy instructor. As if her accomplishments aren't Already remarkable enough, Celine and her partner, Cijo Raphael, created an online intensive called Ethos, where aspiring dancers are given the opportunity to be empowered, transform their state of mind, and go on a journey of self-exploration through movement. Adding to her list of remarkable accolades, Celine was also a cast member for Broadway musical Once Upon a Time and a supporting cast member for the 2018 production of The Beyond Babel Show. Celine has also worked with Cirque du Soleil, Paula Abdul, Beats by Dre, and Billie Eilish. Celine has racked up a staggering 15,600 hours in developing her elegant flow, coupled with her powerful ear for musicality, creating a style that is uniquely hers. When not dancing, Celine spends her time reading into how the mind works and learning about self-care, watching Dark on Netflix, and taking sunset strolls with the Cedro and their dog Midas. Celine's mission is to uplift and guide people's introspections towards a direction that is self-healing, progressive, and empowering to take on the life they choose to create. Aspiring to reach as many people with her mission, Celine is easily a luminary in the community, sparking inspiration with all who are privileged enough to know her. Please welcome our guest today, Celine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow, I'm just like, like it's 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 pretty crazy just like hearing everything like, you know, um straight up front, but wow. Thank you so much. Thank you both so much. Um I'm super honored to be here and and blessed and and grateful. Just like filled with gratitude to be able to to share. So, and connect. So, thank you. Oh, thank you. We're so grateful too. I mean, after like re reliving your introduction that we drafted for you, it's like we feel so honored to get the opportunity to speak with you today. Oh my goodness, thank you. I'm just like it's 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 pretty crazy because I just it it really makes me think back on like where and how it all started and it's just like wow, I never and it's it, like, I never would have imagined, you know, and it's so crazy because Cedra and I just had this conversation like last night <laughs> of like, you know, we're just like, can you believe like we're, you know, just like what we've created, what we've chosen to create with our lives and like this unintentional dance career, you know? So yeah, thank you. It's really beautiful. And, and I read somewhere, so when we were prepping for the episode, um, I think it was on um, your, your, the Salidro website, um, yeah. I saw that you actually had no intention of joining a team, but you were looking for a free class. Talk to yes. us about that experience. Yeah. So, I mean, starting off, definitely like music and dance has always been a part of my life as far as like you know, grew up in a Mexican household. So Saturday, Sunday mornings were woken up by loud music to clean the house. And my mom is very out, a very outgoing woman and and loud and loves dancing. So she would like take salsa and, and bachata classes and all kinds of things like that. But I think at the time we were growing up, it was very limited, like financially, you know, there was enough to put food on the table. There was enough for what we needed, clothes and everything, but not really more than that so 
um, I always dreamed of like jumping into a dance class, you know, and, and all the, and getting trained. And I'm like, I know I can do it. I know I just need someone to train me. Like I, I have a love for it. Um, so then with that being said, you know, I was like, okay, well, what's free, you know? So it, it's like, let's still make it happen, but what's free. And I, the first time I got put in front of like a dance show, I would say was in, um, it was years ago. I want to say it was in sixth grade. So like 2006, we had a field trip and like, ironically, it was to like one of Culture Shock's shows. I don't know how it ended up being like, I, I, even now I'm like, wow, I, mean, I don't know, like my school from Vista, like chose to go to this, you know, Culture Shock. Um, so it was really cool, like seeing, like, you know, I was just like mind blown. I was like, everyone be quiet right next to you. I'm like really focused right now because this one, you know, it was free and I'm here and I'm going to be here. <laughs> um, so that kind of, you know, really opened it up along with like, you know, ABDC and YouTube. Um, and then when it came to it, like there was, there was, I came across like this whole community that I didn't know about, you know, in San Diego. And, um, I was just researching as well, like what, what else is there? What else is there? You know? And I came across like this free show, you know, San Diego's best dance free at the Del Mar fair. So I was like, Hey mom, can we go to the fair on this day? Like, you know, like she's just like, why? And, you know, it was just kind of like, we had to choose one day of, of, of that time, you know, and that was the day that we chose to go. So I was like, we're going to go this day and I'm going to watch this show. And I saw Cookies, I saw 220, SG and IDK and like all these things. And I'm just like in seats like, oh my goodness. I was like wearing glasses. I had no idea who anyone was like, and it's crazy because now I look back and I'm like, I definitely knew. I know some of those people that I saw on stage at the time, you know? Um, so, you know, I, I was like, okay, according to what I saw, who is the closest studio to where I live, you know? Cause what if I do, you know, like I was just like, what if, what if, what if? Um, so I came across Studio 14. I lived in Vista at the time here in, by Oceanside. Um, and Studio 14, I was located in Encinitas. So I, uh, what was it? Like the performance or the competition was like in June or something like that. And auditions were like in August. And I came across the fact that it was free. So I was like, okay, let's do it. So um, it was crazy because my mom at the time, this was summer of 2010, August, 2010, my mom got a surgery and I was taking care of her. So, you know, she was bed rest, like bedridden and, um, I was like making breakfast for her and all these things. And, and during that time I was like, uh, can I go audition? You know, cause I, you know, I was spending so much time taking care of her and, and, and I asked her, I was like, can I go audition for, for this team? And da, da, da. I, I like, nothing's going to happen from it. Like, I know I'm not going to make it. Like, you know, I was just like, it's my first time, like actually taking a class. Um, she was like, yeah, if your cousins can take you, my cousin lived right next door. And I was like, Hey, my cousin was like, probably like 16. 17 at the time and he was like yeah I'll take you and I was like okay perfect you know showed up and and like had a like a purple shirt and like pink sweatpants I had no idea (laughs) how to dress up and like you know I walk in through the doors and and it's crazy because obviously super nervous didn't know anyone but I sit down to fill out the forms and the first person that actually introduced themselves to me was Amor Ledesma from Cookies first person I met in the community followed by Jackie Lewis and I remember I was like oh my goodness they're so nice I'm like so welcoming and I felt so great and um yeah like went into the to to the audition for true definition at the time like without expectation of making it I was just like just try my best because obviously it's free and um yeah, and then following day, like, my mom was like, yeah, you're definitely not going to make it. It was kind of a situation, you know, because it was like, okay, like, you can go have one. But uh, it wasn't really, like, a, a supportive thing yet. Um, and, um, yeah, the following day, they called, and they're like, yeah, we're interested in having you join the team. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> this wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> um, and then they were like, yeah, it's like, it's like X amount of dollars. And I was like, Ooh, that's quite a bit. I think it was like two, one something or two something. And I was like, Oh my, a month. 
And I was like, we're definitely not going to do this. Like, how is this possible? And my mom, like, it was pretty crazy because my mom was like, let's do it. And I was like, all right. And at the time, my mom was actually unemployed. So she, it was like three years into her being unemployed. And she was like, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to make it happen. And I was like, okay, all right. So like, and then from there, it just kind of took off and and we did everything possible to, to you know, pay this journey that had just started. So we were like cleaning houses. We were like, um, mostly that every single weekend, that was like the weekend, you know, go do that. And then in the evening, go dance. And, um, yeah, that was like the, the first of it all. And, and it started with that free audition. So it's like, it, it's very, now when I think back on that, or when I see there being free workshops and free stuff like that, I'm just like, that's super important because like it's, it makes it accessible to people that may not financially be able to start a journey you know, officially through like paying classes, you know, like, and maybe it's like this as it was for myself. So that was definitely the first day. And now I look back and, you know, with the introduction, I was like, dang, like it's really been a long way, but very, very happy with how it's gone. So, yeah. What I find so incredible about your story and your experience is, like you said, you were able to find a resource that was accessible to you to sort of like Mm -hmm. scratch that itch, to scratch Mm -hmm. that curiosity and see like, okay, like I I, want to try it. Like, let me go, let me go see what's out there. And I feel like a lot of our listeners can take away from that experience, from hearing your story. Just know that you don't have to like, you, you don't have to feel overwhelmed at like the big picture. Um, all yeah. you need to do is find a way to get your foot in the door and then kind of like figure it out along the way. I don't think any of us have it figured out from the beginning. I'm no. sure when you went to that audition, you know, you weren't thinking that you would be sitting here today with all of your yeah. accomplishments and accolades. I mean, that's really incredible. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, like even, you know, I remember, I think it was like, you know, the first few rehearsals for True Death was like training, learning pieces from from both Kristen and Jeff. And I remember it came down to like the medley making process, and and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna start. We're gonna be starting our medley today." And I turned and I was like, "What's a medley?" I had no idea. Like I, I had to ask someone. I was like, "Oh my god, what is a medley?" Like I have no idea what this is, and it was all just so brand new. Like so many words, things like terminology and just like like I had never tasted boba like I tried in and out for the first time like a lot a lot of things were super new to me you know so like um I just think back like even now when I drink boba I'm like I remember when I first tried this like it's all things to dance and like the people within it so um yeah yeah that's amazing. And I really love that, you know, you you went to your mom and you had the expectation of like, okay, it's too much. We're not going to do this. But your mom said to you, no, we're going to do this and we're going to do whatever it takes. And I love that because it's really just reminding us how important it is to fuel our passions and, and, oh, and yes. fill that bucket. Because I think we forget that sometimes in the day to day, you know, we get caught up in what we need to do versus what we want to do. Yes. Yes. That that's, and that's super huge. That's something that Cedra and I are on right now. Like, you know, do what you want to do because like, that's genuinely what fuels you, you know? And like, at, at the end of the day, we'll make so many excuses for ourselves and like, well, we can't because boom, we can't because boom. But by creating that conversation of we can't or, I'm stuck or those limiting conversations, of course, we'll never be able to step out of it because we are giving ourselves, ourselves excuses or exceptions, you know, because we don't allow ourselves to put ourselves in a different situation of like having to figure it out, you know, like, and, um, I was listening to this podcast about this guy and like he, this man, I think it was like his father-in-law or his dad asked him like, what do you want to do now? And he's like, I, I want to be a motivational speaker. And he's like, okay, we'll do it. And he was like, just do it. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, what do you mean by that? He's like, yeah, just like what's stopping you, you know? And like, you start thinking about like all these excuses, these things, but it's because 
we are afraid, you know, of that uncomfortable, like the discomfort, you know, but in reality, when you welcome that discomfort, you have no idea what else can open, open up for you, you know, and my mom being down to like, it was actually just crazy because like her being unemployed, it was just like, like, honestly, at the time we were even going to like food banks for food, you know, like we, it was crazy to be able to think, wow, we're really going to make this luxury happen. You know, we were living in a studio in a one bedroom, me and my sister, my mom were sharing the room and my brother was sleeping in the living room. And like, just to think back on that time, like, I'm just like, when I see someone or hear about someone feeling like they're limited in that kind of way, I'm like, no, you have no idea about like, your potential, like what you can create, like it doesn't matter where you came from, you know, like it's just like what you do, what you, how you do it, like what you do. And um, yeah, being passionate about that. So, yeah. I love that. Well, and I think I don't, I don't want to stray too much uh, because mm-hmm. I do want to hear a little bit more about your experience with cookies and, and, and mm-hmm. some of your mm-hmm. experience, but I love where we're going with this because I think especially now in a time with, you know, shelter in place, you know, there, we're yeah. very limited with what we can do and where mm-hmm. we can go and who we can be with. It really is a time for self-reflection and, yes. and looking at these opportunities and really trying to overcome those fears because, Mm -hmm. there isn't much else that we can do right now you know so Mm -hmm. I just I love that you said that and I love that you I I love that you don't believe in making excuses you just have to go and do and take action I love that yeah I mean at the end of the day you're only as limited as you make yourself to be like you're only as limited as much as you limit yourself that's it like really that's it no one else is doing that for you you know, and it's simply us one with our mind. And it's just like, yeah, like we, we tend to like blame things on the outside, but I think it's almost like a lack of responsibility. You know, it's like, we want to blame other things we want to, you know, but it's not really that (laughs) like, it really just starts from within. Um, and that's huge. Really, really believe in that. And like, I think because of that, like my mom's just, just such a huge, like inspiration to me about that because she's um made the impossible possible like right now like literally in the house where that she's always dreamed of since we were little you know like she's always talked about like owning her own land and like making this possible and we're just like how are you gonna make that happen like we can barely pay the bills like we can barely like do these things and like last year you know I don't know how it happened but she was able to get her own property and she built her own house and here we are So it's just like, that's why limitations don't exist. It only exists as much as you want them to, for sure. That's incredible. Congrats to your mom and your entire family. I mean, (laughs) talk about like putting limiting beliefs aside. That's that's really like breathtaking to hear. We, I know Michelle said that we wanted to kind of circle back and talk a little bit more mm-hmm. about your experience being on Studio 429 Teams. Yes. Um, I know around that time, the IDK, like Del Mar, San Diego County Fair, Del Mar Fair, yes. um, that was definitely a high point for True Deaf Breakthrough and mm-hmm. Choreo Cookies. So I'm sure our listeners would be curious to hear what was a typical day of rehearsal like? And, and was it similar between all three teams? I mean, obviously as you went on to Mm -hmm. choreo cookies I'm sure the the training got a little bit more intense but what were some Mm -hmm. common themes that they carried between the three teams some common things like but I think like since the from the get-go was just like being being the best version of yourself being a good person like that was like the foundation of it all like the moves all the dancing stuff comes afterwards but like the core Thing was just being a great person and always aiming for the best version of yourself whether that be through movement or like outside of dance you know like in school in life like all those things aiming for the best version of yourself and um with true death and breakthrough training was I mean twice a week for two hours which now I think about it, I'm like wow that's pretty short <laughs> you know like <laughs> um but we got so much done within those four hours a week you know so um on top of that, uh, there was a requirement of eight classes a month. So, you know, and at the time, it's which is crazy to think about, like at the time on the schedule for 429 was like 
you know, Keone, Mari, Ving, Carlo, Chris, um, and so much more, you know? So like to be able to accomplish these eight required eight classes per month to be on these junior teams was definitely a huge help, you know, like to where I've gotten to today. And once I joined Cookies, the requirement did go down to two classes a month, but the intensity of rehearsals increased by so much, you know, like we were tackling on challenges of like when it came to like building the gravity set, you know, that was a huge like physical push because we were training with like weights on our ankles, weights on foam because we were thinking about that. It was just like crazy. Like it, it definitely grew by so much, not just physically, but mentally. I think mentally that's um, what cookies really opened up for me. And especially due to what I was going through at the time, just as an adult growing up, you know, fresh out of high school, being the youngest at the t- of the team at some point. Um, I grew, grew up with cookies, you know, and a lot of like what I've come to understand about what it takes to being a leader or like not waiting for opportunities or like making, creating opportunities for yourself all really because I'm what I'm well I'm 20 I keep thinking I'm 26 but I'm 25 I'm soon turning 26 (laughs) I'm 25 years old so and I joined when I was 18 so I mean you know that that's definitely a huge chunk of like that development into adulthood so yeah no I was just gonna say funny story I was going through your Instagram Celine and I Mm -hmm. saw that there um one of our cousins was actually in your picture Uh, oh really yeah, he used to dance with 429. It's Nick Nick Balliser. Nick yeah, and- yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cool. What a small wow. world. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sorry, Devin, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh no, I was just, I was going to say like, Celine, I do the exact same thing. I'm going to be turning 30. And so like for the past like six months, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm 30. But I was like, no, I'm not. Like, I I don't need to rush this. Like, no, I'm still 29. I'm still under 30. Yeah. I feel like there's a sense of excitement. Honestly, I'm just like, oh, I'm 26. Like, <laughs> like you know, some people fear, fear like getting older, but I'm just like, oh, I don't, I'm not there. Like, not in that mindset because it's just like you rack up so much wisdom with time, you know. And like, um, you, I don't know. There's just like, I mean, that's a whole other conversation about time, but yeah. <laughs> I want to hear about, I know you talked a little Mm -hmm. bit about your time on on Choreo Cookies, but Mm -hmm. you know, you recently closed that chapter. Mm -hmm. um, And and I want to hear about um, how that was for you, you know, closing that chapter um, and how you moved on to the next phase of of your dance career. Yeah. I mean, closing that chapter was really hard, really difficult to come to. Like I, when I first joined Cookies, like I always imagined, you know, the perfect way of exiting, you know, like with the the last set and like knowing and like crying my eyes out, you know, like at the end of it, I had this whole image thought up, but due to life, you know, sometimes you don't know, you just don't know, you know, and in 2018 was super blessed to become a part of, you know, season one cast for Babel. And definitely didn't see that coming, you know, like I, yeah, I didn't see that coming, but from 2018 to 2020, it did kind of like my commitment to cookies was like, not is like, was like, I would say like halftime, um, was still trying to make as much rehearsals as possible, but there was so much already going on with Babel at the time. And then um, you know, us getting opportunities like doing Cirque du Soleil and like Beats by Dre and, um, and then season two coming up as well and season, and then New York, you know? And so I was like, okay, yeah, after, um, when the opportunity came up to go to Babel or to New York for Babel, I was like, yeah, 
definitely going to come back into cookies and going to go straight into arena. Like that was the plan. And then in November of last year, I get a call and I was like, it was like 11 a.m. And I was like, what the heck? Like a call from New York. And I was like, that's so odd. And um, I was like, what? I was like thinking, I was like, what if it's like the Britney show? I was like, no, maybe not. I don't know. Anyways, and then I answered it and they're like, yeah, we would love to offer you a spot for our um, Broadway run of Once Upon a One More Time. And I was like, me? (laughs) I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Like, I I didn't see it coming for sure because it was just like, oh, shoot. Um, But like super excited at the time. And I was like, oh my goodness, but where does this leave cookies? You know, so I was like, because that wouldn't, they were saying how the Broadway run would be in September. So I was like, okay, all right. I was like, okay, well, we can still work it out. I was like, maybe I come back for arena for a little bit and I do arena and then that's the last one. And then I go back into, you know, the Broadway run of this, of this show. And, but it, you know, COVID hit and it kind of took a left turn with everything. And, um, but I think, I mean, obviously I didn't know that COVID was going to happen, but um, thinking about it, reflecting on it, I was just like, I think, I think I'm coming to that point where I do, I might, may have to leave cookies. This was December. Um, and I talked to the directors and it was really difficult because I did want to continue as long as I could. Um, but I was like, I'm going to be in New York the whole time, like the whole year of 2020. And then I was like, I'm going to come back and I'm going to, I want to, if I'm a part of something, I really want to make sure that I'm a part of it. Like, I really want to make sure that I know everyone that's walking through the door and I get to the, like, you know, that I'm really there. Um, but then if I were to come back a year later, I would have missed, you know, a whole new batch coming in. I would have missed like so many things. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that at the time was like, best decision to just kind of use not use I've always heard you know or not always heard I've come to understand as well that cookies isn't the final destination it's like the stepping stone into your next thing right so um I was like I don't want to accept it I was like no I was like no it can't be I was like, but I think, I think it, it is that when, well, you know, what everyone else has been saying, like all the alumni has been saying. So I was like, okay, all right, I'm ready for that next step. And, you know, closing this, this chapter and opening up this new book. So yeah, really sad. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to cry. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to be good because it's going to be like, it was ironically like the, the literally January, like New Year's Day. And I was like, wow, how ironic that it's starting off with me closing this book, you know, like, and, and then I was like, okay. And I was like trying to prep this letter and all these, it's all this like perfect image stuff, right? Trying to fulfill it. But then it came to, I was like, you know what? No, I'm overwhelmed with feelings. And, I, and they're like, yeah, so if someone has an announcement for me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I like started crying. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't see this happen or like coming at all, but. Um, it was beautiful because I, I felt so supported, you know, I felt super supported and, and I told them why, and, um, I was followed with like, congratulations and, um, yeah, just made me super proud in that moment. So yeah, that's kind of how it went down for that last rehearsal. Was it better than you imagined? Cause I know you were saying you had like the perfect image. Yeah, it was. I was like, you know what, this was supposed to happen. This went exactly the way that it was supposed to. And, you know, it really does go to show, really savor each performance that you do have because you never know when it will be your last, you know? So like going into arena um, for, it, it was Fabian's last set when, you know, he was part of the team for so long. Um, Fabian, Darian and, and Devin. And um and ironically, that ended up being my last set too, you know. So now looking back, I was like, that's the perfect way. It went, it happened all the way that it was supposed to. So super happy. Would you say that that was your favorite set during Cookies? Or do you have another favorite from like the time that you're on the team? Ooh, cool. mine is definitely Orphans in 2015. And um, <clears throat> my favorite set is Orphans because there was just so much happening in life at the time. And like, I guess a little, a little 
I would say little. <laughs> it's love backstory. Um, April of 2014. Yes. So that was like the year before the orphan set, the Vibe Orphan set. Um, my mom had a court hearing for, um, she had a court hearing the same day as Wad LA, the Galaxy set. So ironically, that that set too has a lot of story um, connected to my life. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but she had a court hearing, and and this hearing was was going to de- determine as to whether or not she was going to go to prison. And the reason why that happened was is due to tax stuff. Um, but she, you know, we had both had this big day going on on the same day. You know, she was go- she went to the East Coast, and I was in LA and had performed and everything. And, um, at the end of the day, as I was walking down from awards, I get this, I get the text and she's like, okay, well, it looks like I do have to turn myself in on May 30th. And so I was like, okay, at the time I was like, oh my gosh, this is really going to happen. What's going to happen? What is life? What's this is really happening. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, ironically, little short sidetrack. Like as I was walking down the stairs and reading this text, I meet a Cedro. You know, Darian, it get, Darian introduces me to, to Isidro and um, <clears throat> I don't know what it is, some kind of timing, but that happened. Um, and, you know, April, was it halfway through April? So my mom, my mom's boss at the time was super kind enough to allow me to, to sub in for her, basically for her job. She was apartment she was office manager of uh, an apartment property management company. Um, and her boss was like, yeah, uh, Celine can take the job for now and like fill your shoes, just kind of like teach her how to do things. And it was like bookkeeping, accounting and managing and all these things. And I had no idea. I was 19 at the time. I had, you know, finishing up my first year of of college and, um, and, you know, spent all that that time from April 14th and on to May 30th, just learning, just learning how to do her, her role and how, you know, because my parents are divorced. Um, they have a great relationship and, and it's, it's they're, they're very supportive of each other, but my dad isn't financially stable. So I had to step up to take care of my brother and my sister and be head of household basically. So um, yeah just learned how to do the adult thing really quickly and like the mom thing, you know, and be there because my, both of my siblings at the time were in high school and, um, come by May 30th driving to work, you know, and my mom's in the passenger seat and I drop her off, you know, to get, turn herself in. And I, you know, which was like a crazy day to think back on every time because it's just like, I remember looking at her just like walk away from the car and just being like, life is going to start now, you know, like, or it's already happening, but it's just like, this is like the turning point in my life, you know? And, um, yeah, that May 30th and on until December of 2015 basically was me just living and learning and paying rent and learning how to work a nine to five while trying to balance school, while trying to balance cookies, while trying to balance, you know, having like that wish of like, oh, I want to make dance happen as a career, but like, it's going to stay as a dream. You know, like it, it was like a lot of things happening at once. And um, so fast forwarding to orphans, orphans, like the creation of orphans, like was probably the most fulfilling thing to my soul at the time. Like it was just so like those six hours a week that I had with them because I didn't have outside extra time to dance or, or, you know, all those extra extra things. Like when I was with cookies, I was with cookies. Like I was there, I was like fully there. So when it came to learning, I was there, I'd go full out like a hundred percent when it came to casting, like bet that I was like crying my eyes out when I was casting, you know, like it was all just fully present. And, um, no one really knew what I was going through at the time until the night before the performance of orphans. And like, you know, everyone kind of just started opening up about their stories of like how they 
you know, grew up, their relationship with relationships with their parents and like things like that. And that's when I opened up my story and I was like, well, kind of been living on my own and like all these things. And, um, yeah, it was the release that I didn't know I needed, I guess. And, um, come to the perform the actual performance. I think you can catch at the very end of the performance, me just like break down by myself and just like have this moment of like, um, it, it, it's a little bit of everything, like growing up so fast and, um, but being so blessed at the same time to be able to still dance and, and dance with the dream team that I've, you know, the team that I've always dreamed of and, all these things. And ironically, that same night, Isidro asked me to be his girlfriend, you know, so it was, it was all just like, for, for many reasons, that set is, holds so much in my heart, you know, and I think back, and again, it goes back to like the introduction, you know, when you guys were, were saying all these things, I'm like, dang, like, I think back to those times, you know, I'm just like, wow. I don't know. I don't know why things happen. I don't, you know, but they happen and they're meant to happen the way that they're supposed to. And um, I'm here just living through it and learning from it and evolving from it. So thank you for sharing that. That was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I want to make a couple of points. I, I think mm -hmm. that I want to commend you for, um, and, and really hopefully our listeners can take away from this for really setting the example of, you know, allowing those, obstacles in life to empower you as opposed to bring you down because mm -hmm. it's so easy that we can allow these things in our life, you know, extra things that are happening, you know, mm -hmm. that, that really impact us in a way that we don't know to, to really yeah. bring us down without really knowing it, you know, and like you were saying earlier in the episode, you allow those things to give you an excuse or give you an out. Um, but you really took those things and you said, no, I'm going to just keep moving forward at a hundred miles per hour. And I'm just going to take on life. Right. And I think that that's a really beautiful message and really empowering uh, for our listeners. So I, I love that about you. And I think that's what makes you you, Celine. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I want to say is that I think that's the beautiful thing about choreo cookies is that they took, um, you know, these sets and, and, and dance and they made it relatable and they turned it into life that mm -hmm. people relate to. And I think that's why people are so drawn to, to cookies and, and the artistry behind it. Cause it's just so realistic and relatable and beautiful. So it's really great that you got to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I'm like, I just think back all the time and I'm just like, wow, how did it happen? <laughs> like, I'm just like, <laughs> like, wow, how did, how did I end up here? But it's just like, just because I'm just overwhelmed with like, I'm, I'm, I'm super blessed. I'm like, and just like grateful for the things that did happen. And yeah. Yeah. So needless to say, the path that you took wasn't an easy one. And I'm sure looking back now, like you said earlier, everything happens for a reason. But what was something that you continued to think of as you were overcoming these obstacles? Like what helped you get through the tough times? Um, what helped me? Like the initial thoughts are just simply like, I know that I can simply that like I I know I, I just know I'm capable like I know I can do it and if I don't do it I know that I'd be disappointed in myself you know like like I know that I basically like there would be a sense of frustration because I could have been like Celine you know you can do it like it's all all that blockage lives within your mind you know and um it's kind of that's just like, that's like relatable to everything and anything, you know, like when it comes to choreographing, when it came to like accepting opportunities that, you know, like Broadway, I was like, I definitely never was trained in singing, but we're going to learn, <laughs> we're going to learn how to do it, you know? And um, yeah, during that whole time was that. And, and I think in the back of my mind, honestly, was just like making my mom proud, like simply that, because like the moment that she did come out, 
one, she met Cedra for the first time after us being together for two years, almost two years. Um, and two, like she kind of just let me take on life the way that I wanted to, you know, it's, 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 you know, a lot of us do experience like our parents not really agreeing with like, you know, some of the, the artists, you know, like us choosing this dance route. And at first she definitely was like kind of on the opposite end of like not wanting me to follow this. So, you know, because being first gen, you know, she came to the United States from Mexico, you know, so that her children could have a better future. So like, and me being like that first you know, the oldest daughter, it's like, I'm the role model, right? So I'm like the example and um, college was in line and I did go to school for some time, but, but due to life happening, some, I kind of fell out of it. But, you know, I had college lined up. I was lined up for ROT, air, go into the Air Force to go as a flight nurse and all these things. But when this thing happened with my mom and she saw how I made everything possible and happened, she kind of just like, all right it's all yours. Like, you know, and, and I think that was like biggest thing, like just making her proud and, and seeing like, yeah, I can, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. See? <laughs> and I did it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what kept me going. And I, sorry, the few, like multiple things that crossed my mind during that time too, is just like making sure that my siblings felt okay. You know, like making sure that they were solid. Like, even though my mom wasn't here, like dad is here you know, but like, even then, like, there's still a solid sense of support, regardless, you know, so yeah. I can relate to that, Celine. I'm the, I'm the oldest in, in my family. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I certainly didn't go through all of the obstacles that you've gone through in life, but I can appreciate, you know, wanting to make mm-hmm. sure that things are solid for your siblings and, and carrying that responsibility mm-hmm. on your shoulder. You know, my sister and I are actually 10 years apart. And so I, I felt mm-hmm. um, that I needed mm-hmm. to play and still in some ways, you know, play the adult, mm-hmm. um, you know, e- even though I'm the older sister and, and just really make sure that yeah. her and my brothers feel a sense of security and, and foundation. So I can really appreciate that. And, and I think that, um, I, I'm sure your mom is proud and I'm sure she's told you how, how proud of you she is. Oh, yes. <laughs> She is very, very proud. And now with like ethos and everything, she's like, oh my gosh, like, what are you doing with dance? Like, she was like, so in it, which is like, so cool now. Cause like, she's just so invested because she has an Instagram. So she sees what Cedra and I are doing. And like, I mean, like a few days ago, she's like, I love seeing all your guys' posts. And like, it's just really cool. <laughs> you know, cause she's, I mean, also she's like, I think I mentioned it. Like I've, um, ever since I was little, she would put us in like seminars. So she's, she's been a life coach, you know? So like, she's actually coached both Cedra and I a lot about just life and like, especially during this time now. And she's definitely been a contribution to some of the things we talk about in ethos and like, um, yeah. And now she's like a very, she's, she feels, or like she's talked about how she feels like a, you know, like a mother bird, like sitting on her nest, just like, (laughs) <laughs> looking out um you know just very happy and proud of like her kids and and all that so yeah oh that's so wonderful and I'm sure it kind of like gives her peace of mind too to see oh, that yeah. all of her kids you know mm-hmm. are are living uh, a happy and fulfilled life yeah. Um, yeah we definitely want to hear more about your new creative endeavor ethos so tell us how that came about is it something that you guys have been working on for I don't know how how long have you guys been working on this so kind of interesting because um you know with when the quarantine happened when just everything happened in the very beginning we were not the biggest fans of like teaching online and um we were like, yeah, um, this is only going to last for a little bit, you know, who knows if we will end up teaching online and all these things. And um, we kind of started with, um, I think it was in May, um, Dom invited us to become a part of his program uh, called the Gen, Gen Series, The Drop. And it was something that we loved so much. Like we appreciated having that one-on-one connection with students and like 
um, talking to them, you know, and during this time more than ever, you know, everyone's going through something and um, we're one with our minds and we kind of need to talk about that, you know? So that kind of sparked an idea of like, oh shoot, like, you know what? It's not as bad as we thought it was, you know? And ethos was definitely not on the plan, like before quarantine, like it happened one day, I think it in like July and we just were like why not why not do our own program and we're like let's just do it and it was literally one day like one like today and then two days from now like in the span of three days we have like everything broken down all right we're going to talk about this we're going to do about this we're going to this is how much it's going to be and we talked to our manager Cheyenne and we're like okay, okay so we had it we made it just come to life in the span of three days. And I think by like the third or fourth day, we were posting about it. It was very like spur of the moment, but we've been trying to more often practice like just the question of why not, you know? And like, and if, you know, that little voice in our head does say like, well, you can't or all these things. And it's like, you know, it, rather than it question us at the end of the day, have us question it, you know, like, why not us? So like, that's what it really came down to. And we're like, yeah. And accepting like, okay, if no one applies and no one applies and it doesn't mean anything, you know, it doesn't mean that we're horrible instructors. It doesn't mean that we're bad at what we do. It doesn't mean anything, you know? So like we were just like ready to accept anything and everything that came with it. And, um, I, with, without expectation, you know, we ended up getting quite a handful of like signups and we're like, sick <laughs> all right so this is gonna happen for sure and then with one came the second class and the second class came the third class and now we're promoting our fourth class so um each time just evolving it more and more and not really sure where we're taking it yet like we've talked about you know potential ideas but like we're like we don't we don't we don't know where it's going to end up you know who knows it might end up as a group it might end, you know we don't know we don't know and um the name, the way that the name came about, we've actually ha- held on to the name since, I think it was like BBSI. Um, we were listening in on the conversation. It was Dr. Ben and Don from Kinetic Impact. And they were talking about, uh, you know, like the, the, the health, like taking care of our bodies as dancers. And they mentioned the word ethos. And ethos, like it stuck to us in that moment. Like, we like looked at each other and we're like, let's remember that word, you know? And like, um because it's like it's like the beliefs of like within your community right and so yeah we held on to that word so when it came to creating this program we're like let's name it ethos and it was just like boom all right that clicked all right sick let's continue to move forward and um yeah mostly like what that program is built on is just like mindset like mindset is first like that is like the core to it all a lot of us get you know very i think like convinced we get convinced that dance is solely physical you know or like majority physical but in reality it's way more mental than it is physical you know because a lot of us you know we can experience like self-doubt self-negative talk and we'll fall into it you know and then what happens with dance we end up falling out of love with it you know by falling into these conversations so um that's mainly what ethos what ethos is about is just building creating those shifts within our mind that feed into greater results. You know, like sometimes we just need a small mental shift to create results that we thought we would have accomplished in years in the span of like days, you know? So like, it's pretty cool. Cause like we've seen people like, they're like, yeah, I created, I, they uh, will have a one-on-one meeting and the next one-on-one meeting they'll be, be like, yeah, I created my team. Or like, okay, sick. <laughs> They're like something I thought would have, that would have happened in like the next two years. Or like we have someone that is moving to China, you know, like, the, and they're like, yeah, I just, you know, why not? And they're like, I, you know, I'm going to move back home and all these things. And we're like, wow. And it's super inspiring. It's just like a two way street easily. You know, we have, you know, they say like, they say we're inspiring them, but easily they're inspiring us too, you know, which is why both the senior and I feel like we are, um, we just want to set that example. Like we can, you can do it. You can do it. And what's the secret is simply that, that mental shift, you know, like shifting it into like a positive 
mindset and um, along with many other things, other conversations. So yeah, kind of what ethos is about. <laughs> Devin and I are, are pretty strong believers in, in the, in the power of the mm-hmm. mind. And I think mm-hmm. one of the things that we really appreciated about ethos is that it's not just an online dance class. It really elevates your experience. Um, and, you know, and as we said on the intro, you know, we took that from your website. It's really a transformative experience. And I, I think that that is really unique. And I think it's going to go a long way in, in, mm-hmm. in the way that people see dance because, you know, dance is exactly like you said, it isn't just about movement. It's about mm-hmm. really um, honing in on those, those fear-based thoughts that creep into yes. our mind um, mm-hmm. and making sure that we eliminate those. And I really, I really love the concept behind ethos. Um, talk to us about, you've mentioned that there's going to be a fourth class coming up. Talk mm-hmm. to us about how that works. And, and I think I, I saw that you're, you're currently accepting submissions for that. Yes. Um, so for the fourth class, you know, Sage and I have been talking a lot. What else, like, how else can we offer what we have to offer? And what the, the main thing that we want to add on to this next class is like um, more like documents, you know, and creating like actual things that, you know, will be helpful. You know, maybe like someone that completed it, you know, say they complete class four and then like in a month they're in that rut or like they, they're feeling like a little down or like, you know, falling into that negative self-talk. They, they're able to look back at these documents and be like, that's right. All right. Like it just, it's like a remind those reminders. Right. So we're trying to um, currently create the, those documents and, and see how else, you know, I'm kind of jumping in, honestly, like thinking about like asking my mom and like, you know, cause she knows all about these kinds of mental things and like how to work through the mind and like recreating that or the image of the brain. Right. So like, like reforming it. Um, But yeah. And then signups, they are currently open and and they were, they're going to be open till I think it's Wednesday of this upcoming week. And then we'll be starting our first session on the 11th, Sunday, October 11th. So super excited and um, just to see what will come out of this because we have a little ecosystem Slack. So everyone that's like graduated from each class, you know, comes into this ecosystem Slack and every, like it's blowing up on a daily, like right now, like literally like <laughs> it's on a daily basis. Everyone's just like messaging each other about like, you know, um, having a session and like dancing or like they're doing call outs, you know, ecosystem call outs for like choreographing in 30 minutes and like freestyles and all these things. And we're like, that's, that's amazing. You know, like everyone is on the track that they deserve to be, you know, like it's, it's, they deserve to be happy. Everyone deserves to be doing what they want to do. And, and we're just really just overwhelmed with happiness to be able to see people, you know, from, or past students doing that now. So, yeah. Before we move any further, I just want to reiterate what Celine just said. You deserve to be happy. If you're listening to this podcast, you deserve to be happy. And that is that. Period. Exactly. Because, oh, oh my gosh. I am such a huge person into like, I'm into healing I'm into like all about like the forgiveness conversation and like self-transformation and like you know self-reflection it's so important you know to us and um especially given you know like the the path that that I've grown up on there are a lot a lot of things that have happened you know and and forgiveness I think is like at the top of the list with you know you deserve to be happy And with that comes forgiveness and being kind to yourself and forgiving yourself for, you know, actions that you may be looking down at yourself. You know, it's, it's, you know, a lot of us get confused about what forgiveness actually is, you know, when it's forgiving someone else, it's not necessarily for them. It's more so for you and for lifting your heart and for releasing your heart you know, from that stress, from that negativity, from that pain, um, you know, sometimes we'll carry the concept of like, well, I'm not going to forgive someone until they, forg- uh, they say sorry first or whatever the conversation may be, you know, but, um, 
that's not the case and that's not how it works, you know? So um, whenever it comes down to that, forgive yourself and being kind to yourself is, is super important. Can you talk to us a little bit about your relationship with the Cedro and like, how, how do you balance dance um, business and, and all the things that come with, you know, having an amazing partner? Yeah. Um, it's all in one, right. <laughs> Which is like pretty crazy. Like I, it's, Like, it's a, I'm super happy about it because it's, like, you get to talk about everything at once, but because of that, too, it's, like, being able to separate it as well in times, you know, like, when, like, you know, we, like, when was it? I think it was, yes, two days ago, we had a day where we just went out and, like, drove along the coast and took Midas out, and it was just us time, and, and I think we, like, we don't say it, but I think we know when we're in those times, we don't really talk about, you know, dance or like movement. We, we more so talk about like us and like what we want for our lives and our personal relationship and, and um, those kinds of things. So being able to incorporate it in appropriate times, but also like being able to have it, you know, separate at times as well and finding that balance, you know, and I think like, or not, I think I know for a fact that those walks that we have, we haven't had a walk in the evening as of recently, but we were, there was a time where we were going like every single day. And that was like 7 PM. We go out and we go on a walk with Midas and it's just the three of us. And we just like hone in and like, whether it's just like being in silence in our own minds for like 20 minutes of the, the first 20 minutes and then the last 30 minutes, you know, it's like together, but um, yeah, like it, it's, that was also so important for, or it is so important for our relationship, having that time of like, just like sitting back and reflecting, you know, what's happening and like, what have we done? What do we want to do? Um, and like, or like the conversation, I kind of mentioned it earlier of stories, you know, how can we overcome those conversations in our head that have limited us or are stopping us or what is stopping us, you know? So, um, We've, we've really come to understand each other's work process as well when it comes to like, um, like, dire- like directing, you know, we have May Rocky and we, um, and when it came to us, like leading a room t- together, we found a balance in that, you know, and it's kind of like more so reading off of each other's energies and, um, like balancing it all out. It's definitely like that yin and yang feel. Um, but yeah. And, and, and when it comes to like, real life or not real life stuff but just like outside of dance you know when if we come across conflicts like we try our best to talk about that and not just like kind of like stay on the outskirts of it but it's like what's actually going on you know what are the facts you know and do we want this to be like is this staying in line with who we're saying we are as a relationship as partners you know and like we have those we have like little I am statements. Um, I have three, he has a set of three, but we also have a set of three. And these I am statements are more so for grounding, you know, they they are meant to transform our way of thinking and they are meant to keep us accountable to who we truly are. Um, so like because we have our three relationship ones, like you know, the way that we go about a disagreement does it stay in line with these three words that we say, you know? So it's definitely like very important to us and it respect is it very important to us as well. Like, because, you know, I, I, I remember hearing it somewhere and like they talked about how um, it's very odd how we tend to disrespect, you know, the closest people to us sometimes and hurt them the most versus like, and we tend to treat strangers like the nicest and it's kind of reversed. Not that, it, you know, like disrespect a stranger, but like, um, you know, the, the sense of love that's there, you know, is sometimes lost for those people that are closest to us. But coming back to that, you know, and remembering that, you know, we love each other and we're there for each other, you know, and we're, you know, maybe when one of us is feeling on the little, like lower end, like helping to lift and vice versa, it's a two person job. So, yeah. 
I love that. That's really powerful, you know, and, and, and I love that you're, you're saying that, I mean, you and, and Isidro are, um, you know, clearly, clearly you have respect for each other, but it took me a really long time to realize that in my own marriage, you know, I mean, I've been with, with my husband for, you know, 20 years and we've been married mm-hmm. for 12 years and it took me a long time to see that. And only later in life did I realize how important it was. And I love the message message that you've said about treating people or treating strangers. You're always mm-hmm. more, t- have a tendency to be more nice to them. And then you mm-hmm. really don't respect or, or you take advantage of the people that mm-hmm. you're with um, because mm-hmm. you feel like you're more comfortable and you feel like you can kind of just like be yourself. Yeah. But sometimes being yourself translates to like not being the best person, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I love that you said that. I think that that's really important. And I, I don't think it's, it's necessarily, necessarily limited to like romantic relationships. It's, mm-hmm. it can it be brought into relationships yeah. with family and friends yeah. and coworkers. Mm-hmm. And if you mm-hmm. carry on those, those, those uh, concepts through every aspect of your life, I think you'll be mm-hmm. that much more fulfilled. Definitely. And that's so important because, yeah, this isn't just applicable to like, you know, your romantic relationship at all. Like this is every relationship, you know, like who are you two as people? Who are you two as a unit? You know, and I think a huge thing that's very important is your ability to be able to reinvent a relationship. You know, sometimes we get so stuck in like a perspective of this person is this way and they're never going to be any other way. And this is, they're that way because, and we grow a filter on them, you know, and we grow this filter. No, well, of course they're going to, they're going to push me down because they've always pushed me down, you know, but it's like, because we haven't allowed, we've belittled them, you know, we've held a filter against them and we haven't allowed ourselves to see them as anything else but that. So to be able to have the strength to reinvent a relationship is powerful because when it when, because when you're able to, your connections are endless. Your relationship with people are like, you know, it's, you have a big group of people, you know, that you get to like connect with, but um, reinventing is super huge along with like what we talked about, like forgiveness and we're all human at the end of the day. But that's, it's just like, we're all experiencing life and learning and, you know, sometimes we say or do things that may not feel as in line with who we truly are, but more in line with our ego, which is another conversation. <laughs> um, you know, like our ego isn't who we truly are. It's like that, you know, that pride. Um, yeah. I think that this, this, this is super interesting to me all the time and like how we connect with people because oh man the moment that we're able to just like look beyond who we think someone is the possibilities are endless you know the possibilities are open and um yeah I joked around you know when when uh the pandemic happened that, you know, this was sort of like a zombie apocalypse and it was either going to make us or break us as a society. Um, and, and I really just want to say if more people were like Celine and had the mentality that Celine had where, you know, we, we have this, this open mind and we think about our relationships in this, you know, very specific way, I think we'd be better off as a society and we could survive pandemics and zombie yeah. apocalypse and, and anything yeah. that comes at us. Because I mm-hmm. think exactly like you said, we let our ego get in the way mm-hmm. and that drives a lot of the way that we react to, to people and the way that we engage with people. And I yes, think yes. If, if we took a step back from that, and put our ego aside. I think it would, would be, we would be able to survive anything. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. The ego. Oh my gosh. That it's so like when you're able to reflect and catch the moments when you're speaking from your ego, you're able to redirect your response, your ways of responding, which is also transformational. And 
that's why self-reflection is so important at the end of the day, you know, thinking like, when did I, when was I reactively living versus, versus consciously living, you know, what triggered me today? What got me mad? Or like, you know, what, what made me feel discomfort or uncomfortable discomfort, you know? So, um, being able to recognize those moments and asking why, you know, why did I feel like, And the thing is, like, a lot of us think that, like, life is happening to us, but it's, like, not, at the end of the day, you're creating, we're we're creating our personal reality. You know, like, we are, we process the things the way that we want to. You know, if we're living, if we're living life with the filter of, like, no one ever likes me, you're only going to look for things that prove that. And you're never going to find anything else that's outside of that, you know? And and if we continue to live this life a certain way, you know, we expect things to change. Oh, it'll change when, boom, but not really until you're able to shift your mindset, you know? Like, because we expect new things to happen in our life, but sometimes we're living in this cycle of repetitiveness. How can we welcome new things in if we're in this cycle of like repetitiveness, you know, and that's think that that these things are super, super important with dance, too, because, you know, sometimes we think that, oh, we can only, you know, we're only so limited to doing certain things within it. But it's like, no, like we we have the ability to like connect things that may contradict, you know, it's like, why not? Or like someone may say, that's weird. Okay, (laughs) Anne, that's okay. It doesn't mean anything, you know, it doesn't, you know, we have the power of of giving meaning as well. So, oh oh, man, all this, I love all this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. What what do you do in in your day to, you know, self-reflect or, or what's, what are some of the things that you incorporate in your daily routine that, uh, that allow you, um, to, to have moments where you're either reflecting or you're using your mind? Um, first thing in the morning, like, is that like reading those and like coming back to those words and like grounding and believing in them. You know, not just saying them, you know, and be like, yeah, I'm a confident person. And then going about my day and be like, oh my goodness, what what are they thinking about me? You know, like really, really, (laughs) really staying in line with those. So um, when I wake up, first thing is definitely, and this is both Cedra and I definitely, we're like on this tip right now of like um, coming, regrounding ourselves to these words that we, these I am statements and we are's. And um also taking the time not to just immediately go to our phones, you know, not to, you know, go to Instagram right away, you know, because the moment that we go into these, these things of like stress or like, you know, our minds start shifting. Um, And instead of that, it's taking some time to reflect. What do you want from today? You know, and taking some time to breathe. Honestly, a lot of the times I didn't know this actually, I think this was just like a year ago. Uh, I was having a conversation with someone and she was saying like, you'd be surprised about how much we hold our breaths every day. You know, like we literally hold our breath, you know, from stress or just unconsciously, you know? So taking, taking that time first thing in the morning to like take full conscious breaths, you know, and um, letting in that new oxygen into your body and um, just giving it life, you know, like new life. And um, just taking some time to just come back to our breath, like a form of meditation, you know, like coming back and reground. And it doesn't mean that you have to sit down, you know, and, and like, like on your pillow, you know, and like close your eyes and like have your incense burning. But it's like, you know, even if it's like on your walk, you know, like, or on your drive, like just taking some time to come back to your breath and not just not necessarily like ignoring the thoughts that are coming in. Yes. Acknowledging them as they come in, but also like being able, being able to let them go and it's okay to let them go, you know, and that's a huge thing. So, um, that is definitely one and just talking and becoming present to what kinds of thoughts are entering my mind. And are they the kind of thoughts that I do want to welcome in, you know? And if it's like, for example, say like, you know, we're experiencing something and someone yells at us, for example, and, you know, it can be very easy to react and be like, well, you know what, boom, or, or, or feel the opposite or feel, feel very down and little, 
you know, but in moments like that, catching, you know, your thoughts and catching yourself and being like, what's actually happening. They're simply probably frustrated or whatever. It has nothing to do with me and that's okay. You know what? So it's like really separating the facts from like, like what's truly, truly happening. And like the story that our mind, our mind loves to play games, you know? So, so coming to that as much as we can. So, yeah. What I really appreciate about your routine is that all of it is like being conscious and present of how you are taking on your day. It's not Mm -hmm. reactive. I mean, how many, how many of us are so guilty of grabbing our phones the first thing in the morning, Mm -hmm. right? And you get that like text or you see that post and it makes you feel not so great about yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And while you were talking about your routine, it really made me think about this webinar um, that I was watching of Jim Quick. And if you're not familiar with Jim Quick, he's essentially a brain genius. And I highly recommend Mm -hmm. that if you love what Celine is saying, um, I I recommend his work too, because he has some phenomenal things to say about the mind. Um, But he uses the analogy of we are not thermometers, we're thermostats. Um, So we're not reacting to our environment. We are agencies of choice. We can choose how to formulate our environment um, and and make our day as such. And I love that you use the example of, you know, someone might say something to you and your initial reaction is to feel hurt or angry, but you have the choice to say, okay, this, this is separate. I can continue on with my day as planned. I love, love, love that you said that. Yes, choice. That that import that word is so important to us. Like it's so huge, and it's something that we learn about within like those seminars that we've taken um, with my mom as well. Like choice. There's a difference between choosing and deciding. You know, and when you choose something, it means that you have options. You know, you're just simply, you're choosing it because you're choosing it. That's it, period. It doesn't mean anything, like you're just choosing it. Um, But when you decide something, when you decide on one thing, I is killing off, decide. You're killing, you know, pesticide, genocide, suicide, like you're killing off your options. You know, so you think that you have only one way of going. You have to go this way, but it's not necessarily that, you know, sometimes we get so, so, so stuck to that. Like, oh, it's either this or, you know, like I can't, we feel like we can't, you know, but the choice you get to choose to create the life that you want to live easily. A lot of us, a lot of us like really don't know that yet, or we know that we've heard that, but we haven't really come to line with it you know like we it's like well yeah it's there okay cool but I still have to stress out about this thing because it's you know like (laughs) so it's like you know we'll like ignore it but it's like no you get to honestly even when it comes to stress you get to choose you know um life is our game and we get to create the rules that we want to live by and and no one else creates those but us you know ourselves for our own life so yeah I feel like I, I owe you money after this conversation. <laughs> I feel like we should be charging our listeners to for this podcast. <laughs> it's like well, a full on seminar. <laughs> it's therapy. I, I it's it. therapy. Oh my gosh. It's so it's so much fun. Like talking about this every time, like, I don't know. Like my mom will come by, she'd be like, oh, talking about this other thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. And then I'll tell Asidra and then Asidra's like, okay. And then we'll like have a conversation. Oh my gosh. It's, it's super fun to just like figure out this puzzle. That's, it's, I mean, it's not like we'll ever finish it. It's, it's ongoing for the rest of our lives, you know? So, and it's not like perfectionist, you know, well, oh, well we get it. You know, today, we will, like today. You know, sometimes we do have days where we wake up and it's just like, boom, our phone, you know, like, our, you know, we're human. And it's just like, okay, Celine, you know, maybe you went through your day the way that you didn't want to, but you can redirect it. You know, you can end it differently. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and like you were saying earlier, just sort of allowing yourself to, to be and, you know, and, and, you know, I don't want to say mistakes because mistakes is not the mm-hmm. a right word, but just sort of allowing yourself to, to be and go through your mm-hmm. day. Um, and then you have tomorrow to reflect on ways that you can yep. improve. 
Right? Yeah. I, I love, I, I, I really, <laughs> look, I'm sitting here in awe, Celine, and I love this because, you know, you're, you're such a beautiful dancer. I was watching some of your videos and I was, my husband and I were just like in mm-hmm. awe at the way that you move. But I love that we're having this really cerebral conversation because I mm-hmm. think, um, just going back to, you know, the whole origin of ethos, your yeah. mind is so important and you have to yeah. really, yeah. um, to be able to reinvent and rethink things is just so powerful. And I, I, I really just, yeah. I mean, listeners, you're getting this all for free. I feel like we should be <laughs> charging you for this. <laughs> I mean, like it's staying, I mean, on that tip too, like it's okay to change your mind. Maybe yesterday you thought you didn't like something. And then today you're like, wait, actually I have a confession. <laughs> I like, you know, like, so it's just like, it's okay. And I think some of us, like, again, our ego gets in the way where it's like, no, you should be, you should know, you should, you should, you know, whatever this person told you this. And that means that this, none of that, you know, it's just like, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a game. It's a game that we get to play and, and we choose, we choose at the end of the day. So I love that word. That's what it comes down to. Especially like in the moment, maybe like in a moment where you feel so frustrated and you're just like, oh, all these things. Like if you just simply think about that word, like choose, like I get to choose what I create from this. Boom. What are you choosing? Are you choosing to go downhill from it or just like kind of, just, you know, go in a different direction? So, yeah. Well, and it really simplifies your life if you think about it. If if you live off the simple the simple premise of living your life by choice – imagine Mm -hmm. how much more like not only simplistic your life would be, but just how much more fulfilling it would be because you're living your life by the choices you make. Like, I I don't know Mm -hmm. if our our listeners are, you know, can really grasp that, but it's, it really is that simple. Yeah. Yeah. And honest, sometimes like, you know, this, this thing doesn't happen overnight. You don't just wake up and you're just like, all right, I'm going to meditate. All right. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to feel great for the rest of my life. It's a process. Like, you know, because, because the the reason why is because so many years we've dedicated to negative self-talk and it's worked for us, you know, oh, you're not great at what you do. So I'm going to try to, or not try, I'm going to convince myself that I'm not, you know, but it's like that when you're constantly falling back on that negative self-talk as your homeostasis, you're never going to truly feel good or happy, you know? So, um, or like, you know, any kind and literally any kind of negative self-talk. So it's really important to have your homeostasis as like this solid foundation of like, you know what, I may not know how to do it right now, you know, but I, I, I'm going to do it, you know, or like, I believe in myself, simply that period. Um, And that's super important with dance. You know, that's so important to believe in yourself because many of us have fallen out of it because, you know, for many different reasons. Um, And, and, and this isn't just dance. Like this is in life, like school, maybe, you know, we, we feel discouraged for some, some reason we didn't get into the school we wanted to, you know, or, or, or into the major that we wanted to, whatever it may be, anything, anything. It's just, yeah, that, so. Well, on the topic of choice, I think our listeners would definitely be interested in hearing Celine's choices and responses to our rapid fire question. So how about we transition over to that? Oh, let's do it. All right. So I'm going to set a timer for, well, okay. So we've always said that this is like 30 minutes, but I'm not 30 minutes, sorry, 30 seconds, but we okay. feel like that that's not really enough time. So we're going to go 45 seconds today. Okay. okay. We'll give you a little Ooh. extra time and go. Choreo or freestyle? Choreography. <laughs> Student or teacher? <gasps> oh, that's a tough one. Oh my gosh. You know what? Oh, no, no. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I say student. Student. <laughs> One word to describe your dance style. <sighs> soul so- Is that a soothing? I'm just going to say soothing. <laughs> I was going to say soul soothing, but soothing. <laughs> if you could write a book, what would it be about? Oh, my goodness. Self-transformation. What's your dream job? Dream job. 
I don't um oh okay I don't know if there's a title for this but just simply being an instructor for a ton of kids in some kind of way whether it's like teacher preschool dance like any in any kind of way <laughs> time that's time. I loved that. I loved that. I, I do. There is um, a couple things on here that we didn't get to um, and, and that I maybe want to ask you about. Um, I saw on your Instagram that you and Isidro were wearing um, Charger gear, San Diego Chargers or LA Chargers. Oh, snap. I was <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> That's home. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so funny. That, that picture, we got tickets. Um, I think it was one of his, his parents gave them, gave him tickets and we're like, yeah, why not? Let's go. And it's like the only game that we've seen <laughs> like all the way through. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it was a fun memory. <laughs> That's so funny. And then one more question. If you mm-hmm. could use to be one age for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, one age for the rest of my life. I mean, I'm not 30 yet, but I would say like 30 probably would be it. You know? Yeah. I feel that. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. That was so much fun. I, I We always cheat because, um, you know, we try to get through as many questions as possible mm-hmm. and we don't always get to them. So even though we call time... We try, yeah. we try to sneak in a little bit more. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I'm all about talking, so I can talk all day <laughs> about anything and everything. So I love these. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, of course. Well, we love talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been super fun. And, like, just regrounding to everything. Again, it's just a, it's a beautiful reminder all the time. I, I think it, also it's like you can never talk about this too much you know, cause it's always something new will open up or, or maybe things that we've been avoiding to confront. You're like, Oh shoot. Oh yeah. That's the truth about that. You know, like anything, new things always open up. So it's always good to have these conversations and um, it's kind of like your foundations in dance. You can never do them too much. <laughs> Um, I, I, we didn't get a chance to talk about it and I do want to talk a little bit about it is your experience with the building block as the, the senior Academy instructor. Yes. Oh my goodness. That we just, we just completed it actually. So I think uh, on Thursday, we just completed it. We started it on August 11th, I believe. Um, and it was an, it's an eight week program twice a week, three hours per, per session. So it's a total of six hours per week. And, um, that basically the way that Isidro and I went about it was, what do we wish we knew when we were at that age? You know, what do we wish, you know, we got guided through. So for us, we, we really took some time to hone in on like the choreography process, you know, and the mental process behind choreographing a lot of us, you know, it's just like, I can't choreograph or it's too hard to choreograph, but that's the conversation, you know, that we create in our minds and, and really letting them in on, Hey, like, you can recreate that conversation for yourself. You know, it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be any like this way that, you know, any specific thing. So um, the way that we've always been taught that it's difficult, you know? So yeah, taking time to like focus in on that, like how to count music, um, blocking and staging your stage directions. Um, Yeah. I think like, because in a typical, like, junior team setting we spend so much time preparing training you know and preparing for competitions that we wanted to take that the time that we wish we would have had to teach talk about other things into this program so that's what that was uh about and we had or we yeah we had 13 students so that was super exciting and um they're just an extremely talented group of people and like, we just constantly tell them that, Hey, you know, you may, you may consistently get that you're the future, but you're not the future. You're the now you're the present, you know, and that's super important to know that it doesn't mean that because you get your usually or because the, the upcoming gen is usually given the title of like, you're the future, 
you know, we get convinced that, oh, we don't have to start working until then, you know, or like we don't have to start doing until then. But it's like you can start doing now and you have no idea what can open up from that. So that's definitely the conversations that we um, brought up with them. So, yeah. Is it virtual? Are you guys doing that virtually or is it in person? In person. Yeah, in person. Yeah. So that's been really, that's been really amazing. At, at first, it was definitely very scary. We were like, okay, no one, like, don't get that. Like really stay away and obviously we did still keep like everything with social distance but at first it was like awkward almost it was like what are we allowed to do like you know so um we ha- you know we marked off the, or um the studio would be marked off with x's on the ground and everyone would have their spa and water bottles would be spread out but that in-person connection is so important as well so it, it's you know being able to see them blossom was a beautiful thing you know and like some of them already knew each other so it was like almost like picking up from where they left off or some of them got to know each other and and we were just constantly telling them like do the work show your work always show your work and and just do 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 because why not you know and um so they've they've been they've been doing a lot of quarter projects and they've been posting and they've been, you know, teaching each other and collaborating. So that's awesome. Well what's next for Celine? what is next well I guess like I mean we have ethos and and we're in the final months of 2020 so what we've actually been preparing for is a move Cedra and I are in the conversation of moving to New York at the beginning depending on like you know the whole COVID situation like um but moving to New York for 2021 and seeing where that takes us and kind of just like jumping into new waters and just being open to failure, whatever failure is, right? We're just open arms, like welcoming it all in, new experiences, new people, creating connections and seeing what we can do from the unknowing, if that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. So that, that, and I mean, we're, 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 currently planning for that saving up for that and to move in or to move with Midas as well and um what else I mean from there Babel the Broadway experience you know with Once Upon a One More Time um and just keeping that connection with people continuing to connect with as many people as we can right now and um carrying on those relationships beyond quarantine so yeah that's amazing uh I I was actually in the rapid fire was going to ask East or Devin. I had it on the list, East Mm -hmm. coast or West coast. Um, But it sounds like you've got a little bit of both. (laughs) We have our heart in both places. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it was definitely like, if you would have asked us a year ago, like we would have said no, like we were, we're staying in San Diego. Like we're not moving, but we got a little taste of it. And Isidro was visiting often, you know, while I was over there and, um, we were like, it's not, you know, it's pretty fun. <laughs> and we're like, you know, it's like, you know, changing our minds. It's like, yeah, we actually do enjoy it. And um, we're super excited to just like see what is possible. I mean, everything's possible, but, but just seeing like what we can create from that space. So, yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, and then the final question for you, Celine, mm-hmm. is what's good in the dance community right now? Right now, I would definitely say is the amount of resources and tools that are being given out. I say given because some of them are being put out for free. Some of them are being put out at a price, but it's worth it because you're able to access it around the world, anywhere you are. Um, But just like online programs, like the directness, the uh, yeah, I the directness to directness, yeah, to um, instructors is closer, you know, and, and I think that's like really nice. And these online programs have really allowed people to connect and like get that, like the a fulfillment that they didn't know they needed, you know? 
So like people, I, I, I've heard so much about like people within programs staying in connection and knowing each, each other. So like this time has been a blessing in disguise because it has allowed people to get to know each other from different parts of the world. You know, so now if someone from the West Coast goes to the East Coast, you know, they'll be like, oh, hey, boom, you know, like pick up from where they left off virtually in a way so um definitely the amount of tools that are being um offered right now online programs classes and such and the connections that are being born from those things so that's awesome celine i know that it really goes without saying i'm sure our listeners will feel it too that you are just a beautiful soul and we're so grateful to have had the opportunity to talk to you. I mean, you're obviously a leader in the dance community, but I feel like you're also such an impactful thought leader in terms of positivity um, and gratitude and also just humanness, accepting your humanness. So I really appreciate all of the wonderful insights that you shared with us today on the episode. Oh, thank you so much. This is like, this is so meaningful to me. And both to Isidro and I actually, like we can, uh, as I mentioned, like we can talk about these things forever, you know, because we're so passionate about it. And uh, we care so much about, you know, people doing what they want, you know, at the end of the day and, and not convincing yourself otherwise, you know, because we all at the end of the day, as we mentioned, like deserve to be happy regardless, regardless, regardless. So Thank you both so much for for allowing me into this space and um, having this conversation with you too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Celine. We have to have both you and Isidro back on. Maybe we'll do a Zoom call when you guys are settled in New York. Oh, let's do it. (laughs) That'd be so cool. Oh my gosh, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, thank you so much for, for really just sharing your insights. I know that I speak for both Devin and I. Um, I can walk away from today feeling completely fulfilled. My heart is full. My mind is racing. And I just loved having this conversation with you today. So thank you again so much for being with us. Oh, man. I can't thank you both enough. Thank you. This has been very great and very refreshing so yeah and it's definitely like i will walk out of here and be like oh all right let's go what's the next thing to do today let's go (laughs) super like energized and inspired and i hope that you know everyone listening in as well feels ready as well and know that they can do what they want Please don't bring your friends. Not- Thank you so much for listening to the Collab Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. And be sure to subscribe to our show wherever you get your podcast. The conversation continues over on Instagram and YouTube with highlights from today's episode. Yeah, yeah. Can't stay dead, no, that's my boo. Yeah, that's-